Tara Stadium, long in Toruba. And somebody on my side said, when you are going to finish it? And the response from this side was, that is pain and shame. We are not going to fix it. It's pain and shame. And now, you are telling us on this side, we must not talk about 2010 to 2015. 2010 to 2015, represented as far as I am concerned, the bankruptcy that you are talking about. It represented bankruptcy. That is where it started. That is the genesis. You are not here. And you. <laughs> but I sat there. And I took it for five years. And Mother for Oropo, he knows that. He's well aware of that. We took it for five years. And you all went on and on. And now you all are trying to play Paragon of Virtue for me. No. No, no. No, no. You are as guilty as ever. I recall the member who sat here, the member for Arima, told this house that PLM must atone for their sins. And I tell you, and I tell you something, Kuva saw the coming here just now. <laughs> and I want to state quite clearly that we paid our dues. And 2010, the country took a decision. I was always one who was quick to say the country took a decision. They took a decision in 2015. Sit, accept it, do what you have to do, but do not knock us. When we stand here and we speak about the activities between 2010 to 2015. Yes. And with respect to the agricultural plan, I think you have some good ideas. You can speak to the Minister of Finance. But I also read the offerings of this government in this budget statement. And uh, I can tell you that there's a comprehensive plan there. But you must remember that we don't have the type of money that you would want to see certain activities done. We don't have that type of money. But I noticed that a $20 million incentive program has been put in place for the farmers. It has been placed there. And I'll tell you something, Mayaro. You will know better than I do with respect to agriculture. For years, successive governments would have been grappling with how to move agriculture forward. And if you go way back, 20, 25 years, you will recognize that when the oil industry took off and there was this boom, there was something in economics that you call the rural urban drift. That is when people left the land. You know it better than I do. They left the land and they went to work in the urban areas, in the oil industry, etc. But I tell you something, this government is committed to assisting the farmers, and we are not going to back down. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, my internet is back up, but we have to go to the break. And when we come back, I'll continue the discussion and continue the speech because I want you to hear it this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. I tell all he does sleep, but he was wearing pajamas, but he is sleeping. So Trinidad Tobago, when we come back, I'll play the entire clip for you. Just remember that. So don't shift your dial. We'll be back.
J'adore Wellness Studio, specializing in alternative medicine and natural health. We are a team of certified professionals helping our clients live their best life yet by way of exceptional health. We are located at number 22 London Street, Aruka. Our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And we do deliveries nationwide. So contact us at 328-6863. In emergencies, 278-1661. You can also email us at J'adore Wellness Studio at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at Jador Wellness TT. And be sure to join us every Wednesday right here on the Street 919 FM from 7.05 to 7.35 p.m. The Codrington Pan family presents T Legacy featuring Soul Oasis Cultural Ambassadors October 14, 2017 at 7pm at UE TLC Lecture Theatre A Free giveaways, admissions 150, free for kids under 5 and children 12 and under only $75 Ticket out plus are Simon's Musical Supplies Limited and contact Codrington Pan Family at 477-2852 Lester Suglau, inviting you to join me on the first, second, and third Saturday from 8.45 p.m. to 11 p.m. for the program Slow Gospel Music and on the fourth and fifth Saturday from 8.45 p.m. for an extended version of Slow Gospel Music on Street 91.9 FM. Simpsons Memorial Limited, number 63 Eastern Main Road, Laventille. Internationally accredited funeral directors and embalmers. A full-service funeral home serving families of Trinidad and Tobago and internationally since 1945. At Simpsons Memorial Limited, we serve with dignity in assisting families in honoring the memory of their loved ones. Our services include professional funeral and pre-planning, burials and cremation, custom-built and imported caskets, coffins and cremation trains, cemetery management, limousines, mourner's cars, grief counseling, web streaming of funerals, fully air-conditioned chapel with live musical accompaniment, full global shipping and receiving of loved ones. We specialize in facial restorations. Call us anytime, day or night, at 623-8688. That number again is 623-8688. 8688 Simpsons Memorial Limited. Superior service always with excellence. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. It's finally here. The all new state of the art party boat. The Sea Champion. It's now sailing the beautiful waters of South Trinidad. This boat is one of a kind. Spacious, classy, and consists of two decks. Equipped with a fully stocked bar, state of the art sound system with your favorite DJs. Have you ever been to No Man's Island on the Southern Peninsula? Well, now is your opportunity to experience this. Remember, it's exclusive. Only the Sea Champion can Only take you the there. Only the Sea Champion can take you there. So, people of South Trinidad, it's time to party with class on board the all new Sea Champion. Call now and inquire about our fantastic island packages, ideally suited for party promoters, churches, and other organizations. Call us now on 361-0560-683-9772 or 281-4723. We are waiting. The Sea Champion. Dare to be different. After being the biggest hit in Fiji, South Africa, Malaysia, Singapore, it's the first time ever in Trinidad. Incredible India Diwali Shopping Festival at Hibiscus Hall Center of Excellence, Makoya, from 5th to 30th October. Get bridal wear, men and women's Indian wear, henna, footwear, immaculate jewelry, furniture, gift items, and lots more. Spend $500 and over for a chance to win two tickets to India. Opens daily, including weekends, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. No extension. Bringing you the warmth of the season. Season's greetings on the street, 919 FM.
919fm.com. Here's what's happening. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. I am Sharon Felix. And I'm Jason Thomas. And this is our news headlines on the Street 919 FM brought to you courtesy Green Dot Limited. In the headlines, all prison visits cancelled. Education Minister tours two schools in Tobago. Regionally, Princess Juliana Airport in St. Martin reopens. And internationally, Catalonia's independence bid on hold. And that was our news headlines to 6 a.m. courtesy Green Dot Limited. Stay tuned for full details at 7. I am Sharon Felix. And I am Jason Thomas. Good morning. News from the street. News from the street. 919FM.com. Now, I am going straight back into this speech because I want you all to hear it. I come here and I start to feel sick this morning. <laughs> Praise God for Busi. Listen. No, no. You are as guilty as ever. Amen. I recall the member who sat here, the member for Arima, mm-hmm. told this house that Pierre must atone for their sins. And I tell you, <laughs> and I tell you something, Kuva Sata coming to you just now. <laughs> and I want to state quite clearly that we paid our dues. And 2010, the country took a decision. I was always one who was quick to say the country took a decision. They took a decision in 2015. Sit, accept it, do what you have to do. But do not knock us when we stand here and we speak about the activities between 2010 to 2015. And with respect to the agricultural plan, I think you have some good ideas. You can speak to the Minister of Finance. But I also read the offerings of this government in this budget statement. And uh, I can tell you that there's a comprehensive plan there. But you must remember that we don't have the type of money that you would want to see certain activities done. We don't have that type of money. But I notice that a $20 million incentive program has been put in place for the farmers. It has been placed there. And I tell you something, Mayaro. You know better than I do with respect to agriculture. For years, successive governments would have been grappling with how to move agriculture forward. And if you go way back, 20, 25 years, you would recognize that when the oil industry took off and there was this boom, there was something in economics that you call the rural urban drift. That is when people left the land. You know it better than I do. They left the land. And they went to work in the urban areas, in the oil industry, etc. But I tell you something, this government is committed to assisting the farmers, and we are not going to back down. Yes. Madam Speaker, the government's theme for 2018 is changing the paradigm, putting the economy on a sustainable path. And I support this team wholeheartedly. Madam Speaker, what this budget is attempting to do is to continue what the government has started in 2017. And their team then was crafting a blueprint for transformation as well as growth. And in so doing, we are laying the foundation for a sound economy. But Madam Speaker, I stand here tonight with a heavy heart because I've been here for quite some time in this parliament. And I say so because of the difficult situation that this country has found itself. But I also do know that this country could have been so much better off were it not for those disastrous five years and 90 days Mm. of the rule the governance of the other side. 
Madam Speaker, they spent. They had a ball. They saved nothing. And now all of them are now talking about this government is bankrupt. We have no vision. We have no plan. But the thing about it is, where did it start? So I want to come away from all the figures and whatnot and really talk. Miss um, Point Up here was having a conversation with the speaker. I'm not only having a conversation with the speaker, I'm having a conversation with this country here tonight. That's right. To remind you all, to remind you all that this country must never forget your fiscal irresponsibility. Mm -hmm. We must never forget your basic disregard for basic norms. We must never ever forget your preoccupation with being popular. And I'll tell you all something. I, as I said, I sat for five years and I observe. Madam Speaker, from where I sit, this budget, this budget is not just about crunching numbers. This budget is not just about the fact that we have lost over $20 billion in four years. This budget is not just about the depressed oil and gas prices. As someone on the ground, I dare say that this budget 2018 has everything to do with people. It has to do with the people issues and the problems we will encounter in trying to provide for our citizens while keeping this country away from the throes of the IMF. This budget will teach all of us to become our own managers at this point in time. Madam Speaker, between 2010 to 2015, no new income streams were created. None were created to support the unprecedented expenditure. Well, if there were, then you all did not tell this country. You all did not tell us. No attempts were made at any form of diversification away from oil and gas. None. The reality is, Madam Speaker, we have to examine the nature of the expenditure that they got involved in. And uh, we know the difference between the recurrent and the capital expenditure. And the capital expenditure has everything to do with the generation of assets. Madam Speaker, in order to fund their projects, the former government, what did they do? They ran high deficits and they borrowed. And they borrowed. They couldn't care less about the, um, the debt to GDP ratio. They didn't care about that. International oil and gas prices have been on the decrease throughout 2014, 2015, Madam Speaker. But despite the situation, the former government took virtually no action to stabilize the public finances. In 2015, fiscal 2015, while government's revenue from oil fell by $8 billion, the expenditure only went down by $3 billion. So you in this constant tailspin of deficit after deficit after deficit. As a consequence, the fiscal deficit ballooned to $7 billion, roughly 4.2% of GDP. So the situation before us is very clear, Madam Speaker. We cannot spend what we do not have. If our revenues have been reduced, then we have to adjust our expenditure. We, as a responsible government, it behoves us to act in a manner that will be redound to the benefit of the citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago. We have to adjust our expectations. Yes. This must be our new reality. Mm -hmm. This approach would give life to the Minister of Finance's theme, changing the paradigm, putting the economy on a sustainable path. Madam Speaker, if we do not do this, then we run the risk of mortgaging this country and it will be on the backs of our children and our grandchildren that the burden of the debts we create today knowingly, they would have to pay. Hmm. 
So we have to initiate that paradigm shift. And the time to do it is now. We need to take the corrective measures now. And uh, Madam Speaker, it is better we make our own adjustments for our citizenry rather than leave it to the IMF, an external force to come to tell us what to do. We are a sovereign nation, and we must live up to that. I can assure you that if we allow the IMF to enter this country, the first thing they will do is to cut recurrent expenditure. And recurrent expenditure, Madam Speaker, covers like your personal expenditure, salaries, wages, purchases of goods and services, current transfers and subsidies, debt servicing. Madam Speaker, I said it last year in this house, and I will say it again this year, Trinidad and Tobago does not operate in a vacuum. We are an open, dependent economy. We are price takers. Whatever happens in the global economy with respect to oil and gas prices will affect us here in Trinidad and Tobago. So again, the issue for Trinidad and Tobago is how do we manage and adjust our economy in the face of decreasing and unstable oil and gas prices. Hence again, I am using the theme all over. The razor debt of this um, budget is changing the paradigm, putting the economy on a sustainable path. This must become our new normal. Yes. Madam Speaker, at this point, I want to place our current crisis in the context of developments in the global economy, and in particular, to compare our country with other countries that are similarly circumstanced. And Madam Speaker, you know I like to scan the globe. So I want to look at Saudi Arabia very briefly. And Saudi Arabia possesses 18% of the world's proven petroleum reserves and ranks as the largest exporter of petroleum. The oil and gas sector accounts about 50% of the GDP and about 85% of export earnings. But over the past two years, Saudi Arabia had to cut energy subsidies. They had to slush, slash public spending and started to look for new ways to raise revenue outside of the oil sector. Madam Speaker, according to the World Bank Group, Fiscal deficits are expected to surpass an estimated $97 billion in 2017. International reserves are down. The kingdom has borrowed significantly $26 billion in 2016, $10 billion April of 2017, and they are planning to borrow yet another $15 billion. The government has taken austerity measures in the 2016 budget, including a 14% cut in spending, mainly on defense and fuel subsidies. In addition to that, Madam Speaker, there were budgetary allocations for, um, budgetary allocations for health, education, municipality services have all been reduced. And a point that my colleague from Labre made, the largest increases in fuel are 110% for ethane, 79% increase for transport diesel, and 67% each for natural gas and low-grade gasoline. Prices of electricity and water have been increased by 60%, Madam Speaker. The wage bill is reduced to less than 15% of GDP, curtailing public sector wage increases, and the renegotiating of all contracts along, um, have been cut also for capital expenditure. Madam, that is the state of play in Saudi Arabia. In Nigeria, Nigeria is considered a middle-income emerging market and is the largest economy in Africa. 
their gas, oil and gas sector account for some 35% of GDP and 90% of their total export revenue. However, Nigeria has been having a lot of problems also. They now have instituted a plan called the Zero Oil Plan. Nigeria has lost some 30 trillion of national export revenue between 2015 to 2017 due to the crash in oil prices. So there is need now to ramp up in Nigeria the non-oil exports as Nigeria's future earnings seem to be doomed. Madam, Madam Speaker, the Zero Oil Plan aims at earning at least $30 billion from the non-oil sector in order to boost the economy. They're also looking at other things in terms of diversification. They are looking to export more rice, wheat, corn, palm oil, rubber, hides and skin, sugar, amongst other things. Norway, we go to Europe. The petroleum's contribution to GDP peaked at 25% in 2008 to a low, an all-time low of 15% in 2015. Revenue tumbled from 33% in 2012 to 20% in 2015. As a result, thousands of Norwegians lost their jobs. And Norwegian uh, paper is saying has become one of the most indebted people in Europe. Unemployment peaked in the middle of the year and has again fallen. That is the state of play in Norway. So you see, Madam Speaker, energy dependent countries with larger reserves than Trinidad and Tobago are all experiencing levels of hardship. And they have to adopt some sort of measure in order to move away from oil and gas revenues. I turn my attention to the Caribbean region. And we must always remember 